So you're curious to create a custom GPT. Maybe you've heard of these, but have been intimidated and thought they were too technical to create. Maybe you have tried creating one, but it wasn't useful enough to make it into your day-to-day -day work. Well, today I wanna to show you just how easy it is to create a powerful tool that can automate many processes for you and your team. This is gonna be useful for really any professional who is trying to automate routine tasks like report writing and email drafting. It's gonna be huge for managers, educators, and trainers who are looking to develop customized educational content and interactive learning tools. This is going to be a necessary skill for marketers, creators, writers, and journalists. It can help overcome writer's block, generate ideas, draft content. It's also going to be useful for researchers and analysts who are looking for assistance in extracting and summarizing information from large data sets, text, or facilitating any data analysis or literature reviews. The main purpose of this video is to showcase how non-technical people can put powerful AI tools to work for them with just simple and creative prompt design and a little bit of understanding of how to whip up a custom GPT. If you've been intimidated by creating custom GPTs or struggled to create useful ones, you're definitely not alone. The way that the user interface is laid out is fairly confusing and it takes a lot of trial and error to get it right. I've done that time and I want to share just a couple quick tips with you to really speed up that learning process and get you creating some amazing GPTs very quickly. Today I'm going to walk through two examples. The first is a very dead simple custom GPT that will help you respond to emails and the second one is a little bit more advanced. This will actually create a GPT that will help you learn any skill and I've created a similar video to this earlier that I've got a lot of good feedback on but I'm still not seeing the folks I work with creating these so I thought if I made a simpler version of that video it might be more helpful to more people. So if you are new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me on my journey of helping marketers and entrepreneurs around the world access these very powerful AI tools. If you're getting something out of these videos, I'd encourage you to check out my Patreon. I've got a bunch of cheat sheets in there. It is how I uh, am able to fund this research and how I'm able to create these videos. So check that out. There's a ton of great resources there. There's some coaching options and a whole lot of fun stuff. All right, without further ado, I want to jump right in to uh, ChatGPT. This is ChatGPT4. This is the paid version. I want to just show you how easy it is to create one of these custom GPTs. The number one rule is keep it simple. Start with something simple and build on that. So from this, once you've logged in, you need to go to your uh, navigation here on the left, explore GPTs, go to create here, and now we are in. We want to skip this create. Don't do anything here. It's really uh, more of a problem than a solution here. So go right into configure, name your GPT. The one I'm going to build for you first here is, like I said, the email responder. This is the number one thing that I use chat GPT for every single day. At the end of the day, I have a few emails that uh, I don't want to think about. I don't want to uh, respond to, but I need to think through and respond to. Uh, so we're going to create a uh, custom GPT to help with that. I'm just going to give it an easy name the description I help you draft emails this can be helpful instructions for the user who is going to be using that bot maybe it's your team or maybe it's just you you don't need to put much in there I would just as you're creating that description think of who's going to be using it what are they going to need to know to get started I'll drop that in there you can also create an image here using Dolly you can use mid journey you can upload any image you want I'm not going to really cover that as I don't think it's that important you know I just typically put my logo in there so that folks know that you know all of mine sort of look alike now getting into the instructions here just start with telling it what it is telling it its role you're an AI that'll help the user respond to emails so I'm just putting in here step one the user will input an email that they need to respond to along with a few thoughts on their response and you will draft the email reply this is typically what I do every day I just at the end of the day copy in an email and say hey I need to respond to this here are my thoughts and it can flesh out that copy so let's just test this out like I said start very simple and see what we get I'm gonna save it here here you can see the sharing options right now since I'm just developing it I'm gonna to keep to only me uh, by default it will share to any 
anybody in your group if you're using a group account. If you're not using a group account, I think it defaults to anyone with the link. And then if you want to put this publicly for anyone in that GPT store, you would click this. Right now, I'm just working on it. So I'm going to just click only me, confirm. Okay, so I'm just going to drop in an email. This is an example of an email that would be fairly difficult to think through how you want to respond. It says here, can you help me reply to this email? And in quotes, it says, this is the copy of the email. It says, we received our catering order late. Since you missed our lunch break, we were unable to eat the food and therefore we would like a full refund. So that's not a pleasant email to receive. You got to think through, you know, how to respond to that. And maybe you've been in this situation before. You say, I'd like to offer them a 25% refund and a 25% off of their next order, along with assurances that this will not happen again. Let's see what it comes up with. Here's a response. Okay. So it's generated a nice response here. I would say that this is too long and this is something that I always have to tell it to do is make it a little shorter. So now I'm going to add that to the instructions. So I'm going to say return this. Okay, so we've added step two, create a more concise version of this email. This is a process I go through almost every day. It creates a decent draft, and then I have to ask it to create a, more, a shorter version. You could argue you could put that all in one prompt, but I'm trying to illustrate here. There are a lot of things that can't fit all in one prompt. We'll show you that in the second example. But these are ways if you find yourself just putting in multiple prompt sequences. So starting with draft an email, then make it shorter, then do this tweak. That should signal to you this would make a great custom GPT. Some of the most simple ones that I have are some of the most useful ones that I have. So I've updated this. Now we'll try it again. I've put that same email in here. Now we're just going through the testing and iteration phase, which is which is key. Now you can see it says, would you like to tweak this response or perhaps create a shorter version? So you could read through this and figure out, is there any place there off base? Any of this that you really like and want to make sure are, is in the next draft? For now, I'm going to say proceed. There you go. There's a shorter draft that's much closer to something that I would feel good about sending. So how can we improve this? Maybe we can add a step before this step one, before it creates the email draft that just helps us figure out how to reply to the email. So let's add that now. So a lot of these emails, I have really no idea how I want to respond. It's usually the end of the day, like I said, and I'm lacking brain power. So I've just updated this so that the first step is for the AI to generate some ideas of how I can and should respond to the email. Step one now, the user will input an email that they need to respond to, you will offer a few approaches to how it could be handled. Return these ideas to the user and ask for their input or if they would like you to create a first draft. And then step two is what we went through before where it creates the draft and step three is it creates a more concise version of that. So let's update this. And now we're just copying that email in there, nothing else. So no need to know that this is an email that you're looking for a response to. It doesn't need to have any ideas of how you would like to respond. We're just gonna put it in here and we're gonna see what it comes up with. This is great. It's giving you all these different options of how you can handle this difficult email. I think number two is good. That's the one that we were basically doing before. I'm gonna say just proceed with two. And again, it creates a pretty long response. You can obviously tweak that prompt so that this is just a shorter one in general, but I'm just kind of illustrating how uh, you can use these different steps to continuously refine it. And it may be good to see a longer version because there might be certain things in there that you like. It also gives the AI a little bit more time to think about it as you're giving it multiple prompts this way. So there are a lot of advantages to these custom GPTs said yes please create a shorter version you could also then add prompts to tweak the tone and let it know you don't use certain words uh, and really craft this in a lot of different ways so there you go that is the basic custom GPT that I think could be very useful at the end of the day when you have a lot of email that you need to get through you can just copy and paste it in there it'll give you some ideas of ways to respond and it will give you a draft based on the idea you like the best and then it'll shorten that draft. Now there's a lot of ways to improve this. You can keep adding, improving these prompts where maybe step two, you just say, um, you know, please create a short draft email reply and, and get straight to that shorter draft and, you know, keep tweaking that prompt there. You can also add a knowledge base so you can upload files. Maybe once you've created 10 different responses, you can say, um, please look at your knowledge base and look at 
at those different examples and use those as examples for your draft. That's another way to do that. And that knowledge base is just a text file. You can use, I think, a Word document file. I usually use a text file. Uh, just giving it examples of different things, you know, so it can follow your tone. I would leave these alone right now. I would leave web browsing off, Dolly image generation, code interpreter. Like I said, we want to start simply. And, you know, this gives you so many different options right out of the gate that I think that makes it harder to use than easier to use. So I would leave those off. Once you have a few uh, custom GPTs that are working well, you can start experimenting with those. I rarely have these on. I've created dozens and dozens of these, especially image generation. I feel like Midjourney does a much better job. Web browsing, I like to use perplexity, although the web browsing has gotten much better. If you're creating code, yeah, and you're, you're running code, Code Interpreter is very useful. Actions, uh, just stay away from. I have spent so much time trying to figure this out. I think you really need to be a developer, frankly. You need to be a coder, a software engineer to access this section. It's tricky because some of this stuff is so easy. Uh, you think everything's going to be that easy, but I have spent many hours. Maybe you've cracked it. I haven't really got it to work. I know that it can work. I know that there's powerful stuff there, but I think that that is where you really need to become a software engineer to uh, understand that. Hopefully I'll be able to crack that and make a future video on some easy use cases there. But next I want to hop into a slightly more advanced custom GPT. Now that I've shown you just a very basic way to do it just by typing things into those instructions. Uh, this is similar to the last video that I made on these custom GPTs, but hopefully I can explain it a little bit better this time where we take an outline of a process. We use chat GPT to create that process or <laughs> Google's Gemini is getting very, very good. So it can maybe help you create that process outline. Then we turn that process outline into a set of instructions and copy those into the custom GPT, just like I've shown you here. Uh, do a little setup there and then we do our tweaks and testing. So here's a very basic prompt. This is the first prompt you're going to need. Please give me a step-by-step -step process for whatever process you're trying to automate. So I want to create a custom GPT that will be a tutor that will help us learn any new skill. So I have put here, please give me a step-by-step -step process for learning a new skill. And it has come up with some good stuff here, defining your goal, doing some research, creating a learning plan, starting to learn, applying the skill, reviewing and reflecting, seeking feedback, perseverance, keep learning. So this is a pretty solid um, first draft of how to learn any skill. You might tweak this uh, based on your knowledge of a specific process. But now we'll move into the second prompt. So the second prompt is just converting that step-by-step -step process into a sequence of instructions or a sequence of prompts. So I would like you to convert this into a series of instructions or prompts for an LLM like ChatGPT. And that alone might be able to get you pretty far. But if you can provide this example based on, you know, building on what we learned before, where you're, you're telling it step one, identify the skill, ask the user to clearly define what uh, skill they want to learn. So let's flip back here. As you can see, when it's generating this, it says clearly define what skill you want to learn. It should be a specific measurable, blah, blah, blah. So giving you that example of just saying clearly define what skill the user wants to learn. Uh, so that prompt here is, again, very basic with just an example of how these instructions should be formatted. And once you've created um, you know, those instructions from scratch. If you've worked worked through that first exercise, this should be a lot easier to understand, or you can just kind of jot this down and, and copy and paste this where it follows this example. So I've added that prompt here. I'd like to convert this into a series of instructions or prompt for an LLM like ChatGPT. Can you please create these in the following format? And I just broke it into these steps and really put it in the format of instructions. So asking the user to clearly identify um, what they want to learn um, and so forth. I hope that makes sense, but I think even just getting started with converting this into a series of instructions gets you pretty far. So now it has created these instructions that we can just use as our custom GPT instructions. So back here again, logged into ChatGPT4, paid version. None of this really works on the free version that I know of. And we're hopping in over here, explore GPTs, going to create one. I'm going to call, again, I'm skipping this create tab, going straight to configure 
configure. I'm going to call this the tutor. Again, this is just basically an instruction to the user. Tell me what skill you'd like to learn and I'll map out a plan for you. Putting in here that you are an AI that helps people learn new skills by following these steps. And then I'm going to grab the steps. Step one, identify the skill, research, and I'm going to copy and paste this in. And this is, you can see, a little more complicated than our last custom GPT. But again, this has only been a couple prompts, you know, outline the process and then convert that process into instructions. So let's save it. I'm going to do only me because it's under construction. And now let's test it. I'm going to say French cooking. Been watching some Julia Childs. Okay, so you can see it has generated, you know, basically going through all these different steps and modifying that to French cooking, which is interesting. Maybe that's what you want. But what I'm going for here is utilizing the AI to walk me through each individual step one at a time. So, so I'm going to add this in between each step so that we can work through this one step at a time. This is return this to the user asking for their thoughts or if they would like to move on to the next step, then state what that next step is. So I'm just copying and pasting that between each step of these instructions. I'm going to update it. I'm going to try it again. French cooking. Awesome. So this is exactly what I was going for, where it walks you through that first skill, really honing in on what do you want to do, learning to make the five mother sauces of French cuisine, uh, mastering the basics. You know, what, what exactly are you trying to accomplish here, which is awesome. Let's say we want to make these five mother sauces. <laughs> Why not? Make five, the five mother sauces. See what it says. This is awesome. Gives you specific goals. Week one, week two, sauce each week. This stuff is just a joy to work with. Oh, now it has jumped right into step two, which is cool. You could put some instructions in there where you want feedback, but I think this is actually working correctly where it's going into research. One tweak I might use now, since I've made a few of these, I might turn on the, or actually web browsing is on, but I might tell the GPT to actually do that research. You know, anytime it's telling you to do something, think about ways where you can get the AI to do that. I think that's basically the gist of all my videos, if you want to put it very succinctly, but you can then, you know, tweak this research and say, hey, go search the web for, you know, resources that might be helpful here. And you can just keep going through each of these, iterating on the learning plan, you know, focusing in on how the AI's responses can be better to each one of these steps. Maybe you don't need all these steps. Like I said, when it's creating that initial outline, you can tweak that. But this is getting you a good part of a way to, I would say, more of an intermediate or even an advanced GPT. So like, like I said, start simple, build that, um, you know, email responder one or one that just is just a couple different prompts that you see tend to use over and over again, a sequence. If you're using, you know, if you found one prompt that you use over and over, chances are you always follow that up with a second prompt. And that's a good flag in your mind. Maybe this should be a GPT. Maybe I can add a third prompt or, you know, a different um, way to improve the process there. So, okay. I hope you found this video helpful. Definitely hit me up in the comments if you have questions. I'd love to hear where you're getting stuck, what I can help with, what things, you know, that you've got working. Let me know. And thanks again for joining me on my journey of helping marketers and entrepreneurs around the world. I have a cheat sheet for this video and all of my videos in my Patreon. Otherwise, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and I will see you on the next video. Make your dreams come true.